Have you had quite a bad injury and now you're finally able to start moving that part of your body, but it's as if it doesn't want to listen to you and it's quite sluggish and it even shakes when you try to move it? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why that happens and also how you can help your muscles to quickly get going again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of your injuries, all done via video call. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to link to our website. Now, of course, it may be that you lost a bit of muscle strength when you got your injury, but actually for most people, that's not the reason why you get that shaking or why your muscle just doesn't want to fire up. The reason for that is usually to do with the nervous system. And the reason for that is you know when we contract muscles? Well, they can't contract if your nerves to that muscle isn't firing properly. And there are two parts to that. There's the part in the brain where the brain decides how many um, of the nerve endings that supply that muscle to fire up um, and how quickly to do it and how quickly it reacts. And then you have the nerve that supplies that muscle that um, has to carry the message properly. And if you get a strong muscle contraction, you're firing off more of those nerve endings, so more of the muscle fibers contract. And if you have a slightly weaker muscle contraction, it's fewer of those fibers that contract, um, that fires off and fewer of the muscle fibers that contract. Now, there's evidence from the research that if you get injured, things changes. The way that your brain lights up when you want to move that injured body part, um, is different on an MRI scan when they look at it. The nerves don't fire quite as quickly or as strongly to that injured body part. And also, if there's a lot of swelling or pain, it may be that actually the nerve activity really decreases a lot. So why does this happen? Well, there are two main theories. One is that because you're not using that part of your body, the brain goes, well, to be honest, we don't need to use that, so I'm going to save energy and I'm going to not activate those nerve endings so much. But the second is that it could be a protective mechanism, that the brain, because it detects there's an injury, it's not activating things as much so that it can protect the injured area. Now, things that can affect the system um, a lot is when your limb is immobilized either in a cast or in a boot, for instance, so that you can't move it for a set period of time, or you just have a severe injury that's really swollen or really painful or that you're not allowed to put any weight on so you're on crutches or something like that. Equally, if you're really, really worried about that body part, they've shown that that disconnect between the nervous system and what's happening there can be more severe. And also, depending on how long this carries on, that you're not moving that body part normally. How can you tell if this is what's happening in your case? Well, the obvious is if you get that shaking or if the muscle just doesn't want to contract properly, you're really struggling to activate it and do the movement properly. That can be signs of that. But often it can also be that you actually can't see anything. There's research on Achilles tendon specifically where they've looked at people even when they get back to full rehab um, or to full sport, that that area in the brain still lights up and thinks about the injured part differently. Now, even though this sounds quite serious, it is actually really easy to change and to get it to be normal again. So let's look at how you do that. Okay, so point number one is, if you're really worried about your injury, work with a doctor, work with a physiotherapist who can help you with your rehab and help you understand how to safely exercise. Because as long as you are worried about it and that you think you may injure it through what you're doing, then that nerve is not going to fire fully because your subconscious is going to try and protect it. This is not a conscious thing you can um, control. Your subconscious has to be comfortable with what you're doing. So find a physio to work with if you're worried about it. Second is get pain and swelling under control. Because as long as there is swelling in that area or pain in that area, it's not going to activate fully. So it's a good idea to start doing things to get that under control. And sometimes gentle movement is part of what you want to be doing for that. Now, then the other interesting thing is that simply touching the area can make a massive difference. It can also make a difference for people who are really worried about that injury to just start touching it gently. So I'm not talking about massive really hard massage or anything like that, or somebody else doing the massage for you, because uh, we don't tend to trust 
other people when we're really worried about something. You have to do it yourself so that you can show your subconscious that it's okay. So it's literally just rubbing some cream into it one or two times a day. And that you, but you think about what you're doing and you're feeling it and you're thinking, yeah, it feels uncomfortable, but it's not too bad. And you just massage it. So you get your brain connected to this area. Then also, just simply start focusing on your exercises. What the research shows is, you know that Achilles study I talked about earlier where they saw that even when people go back to full sport and they're pain free, that their brain still lights up differently in the injured part or, or when they activate the injured part. They managed to fix that simply through getting the people to do exercises where they really concentrate on what they're doing. So instead of whacking out your exercises in front of the TV or listening to a podcast and not really thinking about what you're doing, you start concentrating on it. Now, if you think of wrist exercises, for instance, that would mean that instead of doing this while I'm watching something, I would now go, okay, I'm looking at it and I'm slowly, slowing the movement down and controlling it slowly and gently. And you can add an extra element to this. You can even go, okay, I really want this body part to listen to me. I'm going to just lower it halfway, bring it back up. Lower it to thirds, bring it back up. Because now my brain really needs to understand how do I do this? If you really struggle and there's like no ways you can do it, use your other hand to do the movement first and tell your brain, this is what we're doing. This is what I want you to do. Same goes for any part of the, of the legs. So say for instance, you're doing calf raises for your Achilles or for a calf strain. That would mean instead of going boom, 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 up and down on your toes, you go slowly up, really slowly down. And that's often when you get that shaking because it's difficult to control it. So slow your exercises down, look at the body part while you're doing it, especially at the start and set yourself some tasks that you stop the movement where you want it to stop rather than your body just doing what it wants to doing, do. But then also another hack that can be quite useful is to do some warm-up movements before you get to the main exercises. So um, I don't know if you've ever experienced when you're not injured how much easier exercise feels when you've done a warm-up before you start exercising. And the reason for that is if we've sat all day or you've not done much, the, the brain automatically degrades how active those nerve endings to your muscles are because it's trying to save energy. Now, what happens then is if you do your warm up, the brain goes, oh, we're actually wanting to move. So let me fire those things up. And then your nerves fire more easily, more quickly and more strongly. So for rehab, something that can work really well is if you do isometric contractions. Um, isometric contraction is where you contract a muscle, but you don't get movement. So if we think of the muscles that lift my wrist, if I do that, that's a movement I do. But if I stop it from moving and I'm pushing against my hand, that's an isometric contraction. So for my calves, that would be going up on my toes and just holding that position. And depending on how strong it is, you could just hold it on one leg. It could also be that you just push a band forwards and just hold that position. Or for your legs, it could be that you're just pushing with your leg to try and straighten it against something to get the quads firing up. So doing an isometric contraction for several seconds, several times before you get into your main rehab can really help activate the muscle. And also the stronger you make that isometric contraction, the more muscle fibers will fire and the better it will get act activated. Now, Obviously that has to be okay with your rehab. So check with your physio first, because if you're doing a really super strong isometric contraction and actually your injury isn't ready for it, that can do damage as well. So get some guidance from a physiotherapist before you jump into these things. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to our website is in the description of this video. Take care.